Our next speaker is Knud Hermansen from a company I've never heard of before called Navigant. Navigant? How do you pronounce that? Navi Navigant. All right. Welcome to the stage, Knud. All right. So by day, I'm a mild-mannered consultant at Navigant working with utilities and energy efficiency programs. But one week and a month, two weeks a year, and sometimes for an entire year, I'm an engineer in an army unit. Now, many of you guys might know the military actually cares quite a bit about energy efficiency for the simple reason that our bases in combat zones, if they use less fuel, that's less deliveries, less soldiers' lives at risk. All good things. Now, you might be saying to yourself, I'm not really worried about my fuel getting blown up along the way. In fact, I'm actually a little more worried about being successfully delivered and consumed. Well, I actually had an interesting opportunity about two years ago to bridge this gap. I got to go over to Kuwait, where I like to say the tourist slogan is, come for the sandstorms, but stay for the soul-crushing heat. <laughs> that photo was taken in May. So, while I was in Kuwait, I got to be the deputy director for the public works department. Basically, anything there, if it was broke, the AC, the windows, the roads, we fixed it. If it wasn't there, we got to build it. Obviously, this gave me a lot of chances to insert energy efficiency into the projects that we did there. Now, Kuwait also isn't that worried about safety of their fuel delivery. They have lots of malls with fairly traditional stores that any good New Englander such as myself would recognize. And if you read Arabic, that sign just says cafe and bake shop in Arabic letters. It's not actually translated into Arabic. So our base had um, kind of two main parts. There was a built-up part and a more um, rustic part, shall we say, where, for the troops going through to Af Iraq and Afghanistan. So the more built-up part was fairly recognizable to, as a military base, minus the grass. But with one interesting caveat. As a little thank you gift for the first Gulf War, the Kuwaitis gave, gave us all our power for free. Now, this was an interesting problem for me. I, I grew up in the energy efficiency industry selling energy efficiency by saying, hey, your old product uses this much money per year. You switch to a new product, it will use this much less, and you will make more money and pay off your investment, and everything will be awesome. So to help us, we had uh, two organizations that you may have heard of. Enron and Sandia came there while I was there and uh, talked about this concept called energy surety, basically making sure that you have energy during such critical times as a multi-day power loss. This could be either a terrorist attack or just a good old-fashioned equipment failure. We had one of the good old-fashioned equipment failures while I was there. Lost power for about a day. When this happens, backup generation comes on at the critical facilities. These can be places such as the war room or the hospital, or actually, I learned during that one-day power loss, the dogs. They apparently don't like 130-degree temperatures. <laughs> Poor puppies, yes. <laughs> so, well, then at this point, it becomes a logistical problem. You have how much gas does your critical facilities burn? How many trucks do you have? And how, what's the distance and round-trip time to your, to your uh, fill-up station? And so when your supply side is pretty capped, suddenly energy efficiency looks a lot more attractive and it gives you a lot of demand side man management options. You can either keep those critical facilities operating for longer before you start to get really worried or you can keep more facilities open. Now the other half of the base also relied primary primarily on generators. Now in gen generators in Kuwait present an interesting problem in that the summer load is several times what the winter load is. So on your traditional scenario, you might have several of these dispersed critical facilities, each on their own generator, which is sized perfectly well for the summer load, but in the winter it runs at a much lower efficiency and also has such problems as diesel generators have, like wet stacking. So what we were starting to do was to consolidate these generators, put them all together. In the summer, it looks pretty typical. Same number of generators running the same number of facilities. But then in the winter time, you can actually kind of scale back those generations so that you're running fewer generators, running them at a higher efficiency, and thus you know, conserving a lot of power. So I think this has two interesting lessons for those of you who I did not inspire to go and enlist. Um, <laughs> the first is that, event, as events in Puerto Rico have shown us, even in US territories, having energy surety during times of critical national disasters 
is actually pretty important. But the second thing I think that I'd like you guys to take away is that this, uh, en- this kind of energy surety adds a dimension to the typical art policy arguments that we use. Here we're talk- we have security and uh, surety in addition to just the dollars and cents that we've typically talked about when we talk about energy efficiency. Thank you.